Hey there designers, Renee here with a tutorial for a neat old treasure map. We'll be creating everything in Photoshop and exploring the vast number of ways to mix, match, use, and abuse layers upon layers of textures with masks and blend modes. Follow along by downloading the freebie pack at designcuts.com. Open Photoshop and go to File New. In the New Document dialog box, enter a width of 12 inches and a height of 18 inches. Set your resolution to 300 ppi and your color mode to RGB, then click OK. We'll start by creating a surface for our map to sit on. Go to File, Place Linked, and navigate to the Blixa 6 file in the Freebies folder. Press Place, then press Enter. Use your Move tool while holding Shift to move the wood texture to the top of the artboard. In the Layers palette, drag the wood texture down to the Create a New Layer icon to duplicate it. Hold Shift and use your Move tool to drag the duplicate down until it covers the bottom half of the artboard. Exact placement isn't super important, just find a spot where it looks like the wood mostly blends together. Most of it will be covered by the map. Hold down Shift and click on both wood layers. Click the Create a New Group icon at the bottom of the palette. Double click the name and change it to Wood Background. Now go to File Place Linked and navigate to the Alien Valley file in the Freebies folder. Press Place. Hover over the corner handle until you see the rotation arrow. Hold Shift, then click and rotate to the right 90 degrees. Hover over the corner handle again, and this time you want the straight double-sided arrow. Hold Shift and pull to the top right to increase the size of the paper until it's almost as wide as the artboard. Press Enter when you're done. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Effects icon and select Drop Shadow. In the pop-up, make sure Blend Mode is Multiply, change Opacity to 40%, set the Angle to 120 degrees, Distance to 15 pixels, Spread to 5%, and Size to 10 pixels, then press OK. Now we'll start putting together the map. Go to File, Place Linked, and navigate to Art Fanatica's Vintage Maps 4 in the Freebies folder. Press Place. Hold Shift and use the corner handles to increase the size until it covers the entire paper base, then press Enter. In your Layers palette, hold Command and click the thumbnail image for the Alien Valley paper layer to create a selection. Release Command, then click the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers palette. At the top of the Layers palette, change the Blend Mode from Normal to Multiply. Now zoom in on this little fold over here. This piece wouldn't have the map printed on it since it's folding over from the back of the piece, so we'll hide it. Select your Brush tool. Select the hard round brush and change the size to 30 pixels then change your opacity to 100%. In the Layers palette, click on the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the map layer. Press D to change your foreground color to white and background to black, then press X to toggle so black is the foreground color. On the artboard, brush over the folded area of the paper. Next, we'll remove some of the ink of our printed map. In real life, it would have faded, chipped, and scuffed in areas. Go to File, Place Linked, and navigate to the Design Spoon file in the Freebies folder. Press Place. Hold Shift and use the corner handles to increase the size until it covers the entire map area. Press Enter when you're done. In the Layers palette, hold Command and click the thumbnail image of the Grit Texture layer to create a selection around the grit. Release Command and click once on the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the map layer to make it active. Now press Option Backspace to fill the selected area with black. And then turn off the Grit Texture layer. Select your brush tool again. Choose the soft round brush and change the size to 1600 pixels. Reduce the opacity to 20%. On the artboard, brush over a few random areas of the map to fade sections back. The more you click on one area, the lighter it'll be. Now we'll add some subtle overlays of handwriting. Go to File, Place, Linked, and navigate to the Two Little Owls file in the Freebies folder. Press Place, then press Enter. In the Layers palette, hold Command and click the thumbnail image on the Alien Valley base paper layer to create a selection. Click once on the Farmhouse Chic layer to make it active. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Add Layer Mask icon. Select your Brush tool and change the opacity to 100%. Brush over the Farmhouse Chic texture until you're left with just an area on the top left and bottom right.
At the top of the Layers palette, change the Blend Mode to Overlay and the Opacity to 40%. To give the impression that this is only a piece of a larger map, we'll add a partial border. Click the Create a New Layer icon, double-click the name and change it to Thick Border. Select your Rectangle tool. At the top left of the artboard, make sure the tool mode is Shape and the Fill is None. Click on the Stroke thumbnail. In the Flyout menu, click the Color Picker, then sample a very dark brown color from the artboard. I believe mine is 41.17.11. Change the stroke width to 15 pixels. Now draw a rectangle starting at the top left of the map and ending at the bottom right. In the Layers palette, drag the thick border layer down to the Create a New Layer icon to duplicate it. Double click the layer name and change it to Thin Border. Use your Move tool to drag the copy down to the right of the original to create a second inner border. Open your Properties palette and change the stroke width to 8 pixels. In the Layers palette, hold Shift and select both border layers. Click the Create a New Group icon. Double click the name of the group and change it to Border. Hold Command and click the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the map layer. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Add Layer Mask icon. Now our border has the exact same edges, cracks, and fades as our map. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Create a New Group icon. Name it Title. I'm going to use two fonts that are available for free online. Select your Type tool. Click once at the top of the artboard and type Lost Treasures. Open your character palette and change the font to the Goldsmith Vintage at 105 points. Click the color thumbnail and use the same color as the dark brown border. Go to Type Warp Text. For Style, select Rise. Make sure you have Horizontal selected and set the Bend to plus 50, which is the default. Click OK. Position further up on the top left. Now select your Type Tool again. Click once on the artboard below Treasures and type Of The. In your character palette, change the font to Antique Book Cover at 72 point. Position below the end of Treasures. Select your Type Tool again and click once below a current text and type Americas. In the character palette, change the font to the Goldsmith Vintage at 140 point. This time we're going to change the color to RGB 158, 49, 15. And then position it below of the. Select your Type Tool again and click on the artboard at the top right and type Vast Riches Await Brave Explorers. In the Character Palette, change the font to Antique Book Cover at 40 point. Reduce the Letting, the vertical space between lines, to 40 point. Change the color to the same brown as Lost Treasures. Open your Paragraph palette and select Left Align Text. Position in the top right of the artboard, just to the right of the title. Now we'll add a couple flourishes around our title. Create a new layer and name it Top Flourish.
select the pen tool. Click once at the top left of the L in Lost Treasure to create your first point. Click again above the first E in Treasures, but this time drag up and to the right when you click to create a curve. Finally, click above the last S in Treasure to complete the line. If you don't like the placement of your points, you can hold Command, then click on each point and adjust it until you like where it's at. Select your brush tool. Choose the hard round brush and change the size to 20 pixels. Now open your Paths palette. Right click on the work path and select Stroke Path. In the pop-up, choose Brush for Tool and click OK. Simple adjustments can be made from here. In the Layers palette, create a new layer and name it Bottom Flourish. With your brush tool still selected, click once below the first A in Americas. Hold Shift and drag across to the end of the word. In the Layers palette, click on the Title group to make it active. Hold Command and click on the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the border group. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Add Layer Mask icon. And at the top of the Layers palette, change the Blend Mode to Multiply. If your words are too faded, simply press X to change your foreground color to white and brush over areas you want to see more of with a large, soft brush set to a low opacity. If you add back in too much, switch back to black and brush in to hide more. You can do this with any of the layers at any time. Next, we'll add a little illustration to the top left of the map in the space between the top flourish and the border. Go to File, Place Linked, and navigate to Art Fanaticus Vintage Map 6 in the Freebies folder, and press Place. At the top of the artboard, change the width and height to 140%. Position so the animals at the top left of the map are at the top left of our paper. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the Add Layer Mask icon. Click on the black and white layer mask thumbnail, then press Option Backspace to fill it with black and hide the entire new map. Hold Command and click the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the title group to create a selection. Select your brush tool and choose the soft round brush at 1600 pixels with 100% opacity. Press X to change your foreground color to white, then brush over the top left of the map until you can see the animals. If you reveal too much of the map, just press X to toggle back to black and brush over the area you want to hide. Press Command D to deselect, and then in the Layers palette drag this layer below the border group. Now we'll add some treasures to our map. We'll start with a key to give a quick list of the treasures and where to find them. Create a new group and name it Treasures. Select your Type tool. Click once below Lost and type the Beale Treasure, three dots, and then F2. And then we'll type the City of Paititi three dots, and H4. The full text list to copy-paste can be found in the written tutorial at designcuts.com.
In the character palette, change the font to antique book cover at 14 point and reduce the letting to 11 point. At the bottom of the character palette, click the icon to apply faux italic. In the Layers palette, click the Create a New Layer icon. Drag the new layer below the text list. Select your Rectangle tool. At the top of the artboard, change the fill color to RGB 223, 207, 173. Change the stroke color to our dark brown and make the stroke width 5 pixels. Draw a rectangle around the text list and use your move tool to position it. Next, we'll add our individual treasure sites. These are all based on genuine legends, some myths, some verified true stories. First up, Montezuma's treasure. This treasure is fabled to be somewhere in Utah. Create a new group within the existing treasures group and name it Montezuma. Go to File, Place Linked, and navigate to the Unio file in the Freebies folder. Press Place. Use the corner handles to rotate the image in either direction until it looks more like an X. At the top left of the artboard, enter a width of 60% and click the link icon to maintain aspect ratio. Press enter when you're done. Position the shape roughly in the area of Utah, just below Salt Lake City. Select your type tool and click once above the X. Type Montezuma's treasure, enter 1460 to 1520, comma, Utah. Use your type tool to select the top line and in the character palette change the font to the Goldsmith Vintage at 30 point. Make sure to turn off the italics. Use your type tool to select the second line, change the font to antique book cover at 16 point and decrease the letting to 14 point. In your paragraph palette, choose center align. Position above the X. Select your rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle around the words. Your property should still be the same as when we drew the rectangle around the list above. In the Layers palette, drag this layer below the Montezuma's Treasure text layer. Select your Move tool and use your arrow keys to center the rectangle behind the text. Next, we'll add the Lost Dutchman Gold Mine. In the Layers palette, drag the Montezuma group down to the Create a New Layer icon to duplicate it. Rename it Dutchman Mine. On the artboard, use your Move tool to drag the duplicate group away from the original. Open the Dutchman Mine group and select the Unio layer with the X. The Dutchman Gold Mine was supposedly found and subsequently lost in the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. We're going to give it our best guess and drag it to a spot between the Colorado River and the Sierra Madres. Hold Shift and in the Layers palette, click both the Rectangle and Text layer. Use your Move tool on the artboard to drag them below the X. Use your Type tool to select the top line of text and change it to Dutchman Gold Mine. Then use your Type tool to select the second line of text and change it to 1840, Superstition Mountains, AZ. In the Layers palette, select the Rectangle layer. Go to Edit Free Transform. 
Use the handles on the left and right sides to reduce the size of the rectangle until you have about the same amount of padding on each side of the text as you had on the original Montezuma's treasure. Now we'll add several more treasures using the exact same technique. Copy the last group, move the X, change the copy, and adjust the rectangle. The full text list can be found at designcuts.com on the written tutorial. And we'll add one last X without a text box to imply that there are more treasures marked than you can see on this portion of the map. In the Layers palette, drag the Unio X layer from the last group down to the Create a New Layer icon to duplicate it. Drag the duplicate out of the current group, but still within the larger Treasures group. On the artboard, position the X somewhere in Central America. To keep the X's from looking so identical, go back through and rotate a few of them. Open the Dutchman Mine group and select the Unio X layer. Go to Edit Free Transform and use the corner handles to rotate the X about 90 degrees. Repeat that with the X's in most of the other groups, but each time rotate the X to a different degree. Now for the magic that makes all of these look like part of the map. Select the main treasure group. At the top of the layers palette, change the blend mode to multiply. Hold command and click on the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the map layer to create a selection. At the bottom of the layers palette, click the add layer mask icon. This looks pretty good, but it's really hard to read the treasure details over the map illustration, so we'll hide the parts of the map behind the rectangles. Open all the groups inside the treasures group so you can see all of the layers. We're going to create a selection around all of the rectangles. Start at the bottom and work your way up. Hold Command and click the thumbnail on the Rectangle 1 layer. Then hold Command plus Shift and click the thumbnail on the Rectangle 2 layer inside the Dutchman Mine group. Continue working through the various treasure groups, clicking the thumbnail for each of the rectangle layers while holding Command and Shift. In the Layers palette, click once on the black and white layer mask thumbnail on the main map layer to make it active. Press Option Backspace to fill the selected areas with black, masking them out. And press Command D to deselect when you're done. Now we'll add a little bit of a darker edge to our page. Create a new layer in the Layers palette and drag it to the very top of the layers. Rename it Dark Edges. Hold Command and click once on the thumbnail on the Alien Valley Paper 25 layer. Select your brush tool. Select the soft round brush, set the size to 1600 pixels and the opacity to 20%. At the bottom of your toolbar, make sure your foreground color is dark brown. 
Drag your brush tool over the edges of the map. Any areas you want darker, just go over more than once. When you're done, press Command D to deselect. At the top of the Layers palette, change the Blend Mode to Multiply. Our very last step will be to rotate the map so it sits at an angle on our background. Select your top layer, then hold Shift and select the layer just above the wood background layer. Go to Edit, Free Transform. Use the corner handles to rotate everything to the left a couple of degrees, then press Enter. And we're done! We've created a vintage treasure map using complex layering and texturing, plus loads of layer masks. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to get out there and go adventuring. Whether it's your outcome for this tutorial or something new, head over to our Facebook page and share it with us. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you like the tutorial. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash designcuts to get more video tutorials and regular updates or visit us at designcuts.com. Thanks for watching. Till next time.